Hi there, grade 11s, Mr. H here, and welcome to our prep video for the upcoming theory exam. Now, this is the last one that you're going to be writing this year for grade 11, so all the best with that. Now, having said that, let's look at what this paper is going to entail. You're looking at about a two and a half hour paper. You're looking at about 150 marks for this paper. So there's a lot that can be asked, and we're going to go through question by question. So you know what to expect in those questions, just roughly, because let me just say from the onset, <laughs> as a disclaimer, this is not a blueprint as to, yes, this is exactly what you're going to get in. It differs from school to school, but I'm giving you the overall picture. So the questions here follow three basic steps, and they are knowledge, application, and analysis. So if we look at question one, question one are just quick recall questions. Now you can be asked anything, usually it's a mix of hardware, software, networks, you know, internet or so on, but these are just quick multiple choice questions that you are going to get. Now these are easy wins if you know your definitions and acronyms. So the gizmo.ai is going to be hugely beneficial for you here with the multiple choice and even the match the column. So let me give you two or three examples. What's the most appropriate file format to ensure that shared documents um, cannot be edited by others? You might get a prac question, maybe asking you in HTML, which particular tag is used to insert an image. And here's another one. The process of organizing collected data into logical categories for analysis. What is that? Now, question number two is usually, like I said to the grade tens, a match the column question. So here again, definitions, acronyms, knowing your terms, essential. Flashcards. And here they can bring any terms. I mean, I've got an old paper here that's going through terms like RAM, ROM, HTTPS, phishing, farming, switch, router, terabyte, projector, uh, wireless access point, any of those. So I would suggest to you go through column B first where you find all these terms, go through them, acquaint yourself with it, get your head into that space. Okay, I know what this is, I know what that is, I know what that is, and then move on to column A. And then we've usually got a section where you are going to fill in the missing word or they'll give you the particular term, they'll give you two, and you need to choose the correct one. So for example, if I asked you what the main circuit board of the computer is, and I put at the bottom to say motherboard and graphics card, then you would need to choose one. Or if I leave it blank, then you just have to give me the straight out answer. The next question is under system technologies. Now with system technologies, this is more hardware and software focused, right? They are looking at, do you understand the difference? Do you understand the specs of the PC? Can you answer questions based on that? Then can you answer software questions related to the hardware and vice versa? This is checking whether you know how the computer system works. And folks, go and check out my computer parts videos up here. They are there to help you understand these components, how they work together, how they fit together so that you can nail the section. They could ask you things on storage, cloud storage, web-based applications, and what affects performance. Very important. Here in this section, you are not just going to define. You need to be able to explain. And let me give you a few examples so you can see. With the grade 12s, they usually get pictures, and that's why I had the computer parts video as well, where they have to identify the part and explain. You will just most likely be asked. So I could ask you, what's a GPU? Explain to me what a GPU is, and then what is its main function? So be able to explain and give the main function of that hardware device as well. Troubleshooting also comes up. Now I know in class we've spoken about things like troubleshooting keyboards and a mouse and you know when you boot up the PC. Just go into that because that is important especially in this section as well. The three main steps in the information processing cycle. Uh, hardware upgrades that could help you with video editing. The role of device management. Advantages and disadvantages of hardware items. So again, your SSD, your hard drive, your client computer versus your server. And please, with the hard drive, the traditional hard drive, your mechanical hard drive and your SSD, look at the main difference between them. It's not just that one is faster. You need to explain why. You need to tell me that the SSD is faster because there's no moving parts and it's got faster read-write times as opposed to your mechanical hard drive. Um, it's more durable because there are no moving parts where they are in the mechanical drive. Okay, so these are just 
typical questions that come up. And then obviously the ones on your memory. So RAM, is it volatile? Is it not volatile? What's the difference between RAM and ROM? And these are just a few of the questions that come up in this section. Now the next one we have is network and internet technology. Now this really focuses on connectivity. How do we connect to the internet? What hardware do we use? Do we use any form of software? Uh, things like your routers, your cables, your firewalls, the difference between a router and a switch, the difference in your UTP and STP cabling, bandwidth, throttling with your internet connection, shaping, what is an ISP? For example, you wanna get internet connectivity um, into a container that's gonna be based in a very rural area. How do you connect to the internet? Can you use fiber? No. Can you use mobile? Yes, but what if there's no signal? Can you use satellite? Okay, that's an option. What's the difference between satellite and mobile? Satellite and your fiber. Okay, the advantages, the disadvantages. So look to the scenario and see what they're asking you. But these are all the types of things that you need to know in this section. Something that also comes up are things like your acceptable use policy. Please, your AUP, you must know that. And then something that always comes up, whether it's in the previous section or this one or another one, is how do we get this to work for folks that have some sort of impairment? Now, year, I keep stressing this year after year, please go and read up on the difference between a visually impaired individual and a blind one, all right? A hearing impaired individual and a deaf one, okay? There's two completely different things. Also, the other impairments that we have. If somebody is paralyzed from the neck down, how can we get them to use the PC? What sort of software can we use? Are there hardware items that they can use? These are all typical questions that can come up. I really hope you're taking note. The next one we're dealing with is the question on social implications. So this is how the technology impacts our normal day-to-day -day life, impact on society. So here we need to know some of these laws, things like the Poppy Act, privacy, ethics, plagiarism, copyright, and the different types of cybercrime as well. So here also things like ergonomics, your RSI, right, green computing, all of those type of things will come up here in social implications. Just always be able to explain the cause and the effect. Cause and effect. I know there was a question, I think it was last term, where it actually asked, what would you recommend to put in an acceptable use policy? So think of that as well. What about the acronym BYOD, bring your own device, right? You're having, and they give you a scenario, you're having a party, you tell people they can bring their own device because you are gonna be, I don't know, doing some other activity. You want them then when they get there to connect to the Wi-Fi, uh, what rules are you gonna put in place? You're gonna need an acceptable use policy how much data they can use, for how long they're gonna stay connected, all those type of things. Also your malware and your ransomware. Know your viruses, your Trojan, your worm. And then keeping yourself safe online, especially when you're doing e-commerce. Then we move on to our next question, which is information management. And here you get tested on how you actually collect, process, and present information. So first of all, you need to go back and know the difference between data and information. And what is, how do we collect information? Like, or how do, we, how do we collect data? We can send out a survey, we can send out an email, we can send out a Google form. On that, what sort of questions would we put in there to get the data that we need? Once we get the data, how are we gonna process that into information? Are we gonna put that into a spreadsheet? Are we gonna use formulas to extract from that data what we need to turn it into useful, meaningful, information how is that going to be presented or are you going to be sharing this with so these are the the types of questions and for those of you in the dbe in grade 11 you know what i'm talking about this is the pet so i want you to think of that pet process find process present and evaluate so asking yourself the question right i want to hand out a survey why can't i just print it and do it like that instead of you know going online what's the advantage of one over the other when you present all of this, why is referencing important? And again, think of any project that you've done, any assignment. Be able to put your PRAC knowledge to good use in this section. So our next question is solution development. And basically, grade 11, this is taking PRAC work and asking you questions on the PRAC work. 
So asking you theory questions based on your prac work. Now this can be all of it. Access, HTML, Word, Excel, the general working of the computer as well. For example, I've seen questions on mail merge, asking you to identify a particular spreadsheet function, HTML tags, and even things like freeze panes in Excel. And then section C, which is usually our integrated scenario. So whether they say section C or whether they just have one last question, like 40 or 50 marks um, that deals with scenarios, this is our integrated scenario. So understand the following. With our integrated scenario, they're going to give you one big scenario on top. All, all, all of the knowledge that you've accumulated so far for the year can be tested in this section. And I gave the grade 10 a typical example of video conferencing, right? So I'm going to use the example of, of my lab. I've got 30 computers here. I've got a screen. I've got a projector. And we want to connect with someone overseas. So they can ask you questions based on that. Things like, okay, so how are we going to get everyone to see this individual? Well, I'll have a screen. I'm going to use a projector. What type of projector? How is the projector going to connect to the computer? Um, is VGA better or is HDMI going to be better? What do you need to do in terms of the light in the room? How are you going to hear the person from the other side? Do you need speakers? Do you need headphones? How far back do you need everyone to sit? Do you need folks to come a little bit closer? Do you need to change the seating arrangement? Do you need a powerful PC to do this? Do you need a powerful internet connection? Here's another one. Let's take booking tickets for a show online. How do you go about doing that? Can we ask you a question on the internet? Can we ask you a question on your PC? Can we ask you a question on how the sale actually uh, takes place, your point of sale system? Can we ask you about printing out that ticket? We can ask you any of those questions. So that's what you should expect for the integrated scenario. And that really wraps up all of our questions. So let's just look at a few common pitfalls because I made a few notes here that most marks are lost when learners simply don't read carefully. And you know I keep saying to you, reading is a skill. And I'm not joking about that. Because what happens is if you don't read carefully, you're not going to give me the correct answer. You're not also explaining the answer fully. Some of you are just giving one word answers. You need to explain that answer. Always write in full sentences and give reasons. I use the example of the difference between the hard drive and the SSD, right? You can't just say one is faster. You need to tell me why it's faster. So I need a reason for the answer. So how can you earn a few easy marks? Well, that section that deals with your multiple choice, your match the column and your missing word or choose the correct word, that is where you are going to get the quick, easy marks. This is why I say to you, go into the description, check out the past papers, go use the gizmo.ai flashcards and use my exam guidelines booklet. Use examples for every definition. So if you tell me about network cabling, Give me an example. Tell me what it is. Give me an example, uh, UTP, STP, whatever the case is. Then when it comes to your scenarios, anchor those scenario answers in the context. In other words, if they're talking about a particular um, school or car or something like that, that this is based off of, put that in your answer. Show that you are answering to the scenario. Here's a simple one. Explain the why behind the answer. So you tell me that you need a firewall. Well, why do I need a firewall? Again, what is the reason for the firewall? And you know what? If you do this, you will already be ahead. And so grade 11s, just use your time effectively. Do the short answers. Go to the longer ones afterwards so that you have more time. But manage your time effectively. I know that's where most of the time is lost. You're sitting there, you're looking at a particular question, and it's taking you 10 minutes just to figure this thing out. And it's for one mark. Having said that, also remember to check the mark allocation. Because if it's two marks for a particular question, it means we want two items listed there that we can tick off. But anyway, that's all from me. I wish you all of the best for your upcoming theory paper. Um, I'm not sure whether you've written prac or theory first, but regardless, all the best. And don't forget, as always, to like, subscribe, and share this with everyone so that they can benefit from this. Because grade 11s, and like I said to the grade 10s, marks are not lost because you don't know. They're lost because you don't explain.